We've reached a milestone in our RV home base build. It's time for the barn raising of the new RV home base barn dominium. Welcome to RV Life in Three Quarter Time, a vlog covering our adoption of the RV lifestyle. We are Cheryl and Carl Pearson, and here we're documenting the transition from our current lifestyle to our chosen adaptation of RV living and hopefully passing along some useful information to others as we progress. As I said in the last video, we got on the books with Metal Pros in mid-January so that we would be uh, ready to go in mid-April. They were running about 12 weeks out at the time. And it was close to the end of March before we had the slab ready and we were kind of worried we might not have the slab ready in time for metal pros to get out here and get their work done. We needn't have worried. The same weather issues we were dealing with, they were dealing with. And when mid-April got here, they were behind their schedule and they weren't able to get out for almost another three weeks. So now we're into the start of May and finally they're able to get out here and get started. Should take them about five days to get the structure erected. Let's see how it turns out. We were quite busy in the days leading up to the build, so it was late afternoon the day before things were to get started before I had a chance to back up the utility trailer and start loading the items we needed to provide for the exterior. What we were providing were the windows that we had acquired and painted black, and a vent fan to be placed in the exterior wall of the garage area. It took some time to get everything loaded, wrapped up, protected, and secured, and ready in preparation for the trip. Since I was going to be staying on site during the build, we hooked up the utility trailer to the receiver on the Winnebago Go Buggy, which I would use as a rolling office during the build. It had gotten fairly dark by the time the trailer was ready and I had everything I needed packed into the go buggy. Yes, we should have planned better and got an earlier start, but uh, despite the darkness, I was able to get underway, get to the building site and get set up without any mishap, and to be on hand with the items we needed to provide when the crew from Metal Pros arrived the next morning. The next morning, I eagerly awaited the arrival of the Metal Pros crew. At this point, I was no longer retired. A recruiter had convinced me to take on a remote programming contract. To facilitate working while on site, we had an internet provider run a line to our power pole. I then installed a sealed blank face junction box to house the connection when not in use. Once the connection was run to the go buggy, I was able to set up office and work in comfort while viewing the build. Finally, the Metal Pros crew had arrived and started setting up. I was busy with my programming and wanted to stay out of the way of the crew so I set up a camera on a tripod to take time-lapse shots of the progress of the barn raising. Let's take a look at the results. The work begins with securing the outlines of the structure to the concrete slab.
Once the outline of the building was in place and secure, the walls of the structure began to take shape. Of course, after the day's work was complete, the neighbor's dogs and I had to go and inspect the progress. On the second day, work commenced considerably earlier than it had on the previous day. The diagonal cross bracing used to stiffen the walls during the initial phases of the construction will be removed once more of the structure has been erected.
Towards the end of the second day, I found time to move the camera to a new location in order to get a different perspective on the work in progress. At the end of the day, due to the threat of approaching rain, we covered the materials we had provided with a tarp and then went to inspect the day's progress. The next day, heavy rains brought a halt to the progress. Since work had begun on a Wednesday, this was now Friday, so work would not resume for a couple more days. The barn raising day three activity commenced on a dark and overcast Monday morning. The crew now began cutting holes in the metal skin for doors and windows. A crewman working from a ladder begins to attach connector brackets for the roof beams of the living quarters lean-to.
And finally, the walls of the living quarter begin to take shape. And once again, I inspect the day's progress on the now damp work site. I'm not using the results from day four, in part because there was an unpleasant color cast to the images from the day four build, but mainly because there were issues that arose during day four's work which had to be corrected on day five. First, the kitchen window in the center of the living section was being installed in the wrong position. Next, the wainscoting on the front side of the building didn't match up with the wainscoting on the adjoining side. Turns out the slope of the roof over the living quarters lean-to was incorrect, so the skin would have to be removed, the frame adjusted, and then everything reassembled to correct the issue. That would make up a large part of the day five activities.
With the exterior skin removed, the outer wall supports are lowered one by one to adjust the pitch of the living quarters roof. With the roof pitch adjusted, work begins on replacing the exterior skin, while others in the crew begin correctly framing out the kitchen window. As the workday end draws close, framing of the front porch begins. At day's end, the neighbor's dog and I inspect the progress, and I take some time to examine how the windows were trimmed on the exterior. While not every detail would be complete by the end of the day, Day six would be the last day where an entire crew would be working on the exterior shell of the RV home base.
by the end of the day, there were still a couple of details that needed to be done before the exterior was complete. These would be handled the following week by an individual workman. I really enjoyed the results. I think the Metal Pros crew were impressed. There were several members taking pictures of the results as they packed up and prepared to leave. So that's it. The structure for the RV home base is up. The garage doors are missing. The garage doors are available, but as with so many other things, there's a supply shortage and the torsion springs used to lift the heavy garage doors are missing. But with the structure up, here comes the most labor intensive part for Cheryl and I. We're going to be working on getting the subfloor down and studying up the interior walls on the living quarters. The house that we currently live in, we built 30 some years ago, and we did probably 90 to 95 percent of the labor that was done on that house. We're old. Don't have uh, the stamina nor the patience to put up what we put up with 30 some years ago. Uh, but this part of the work we're going to be doing. So that's what we're going to look at next time. Carl and Cheryl will get to work on finishing the RV home base. While I enjoyed the experiment with stop action photography, I probably won't try it again. It just took too long to edit. The next video where we work on the interior of the living quarters should be out much more quickly. And until then, get out there and enjoy the ride.